Okay, so with that I should be live. Welcome to Emperor Talks. I'm going to be talking about the um, tree gate false third type of style. Uh, very gateway heavy against Zerg. Uh, and a little bit about PVC in general today. So uh, hopefully we'll find that enjoyable and educational. I um, already got my first replay loaded up here. Um, a PVC here on overgrowth against a guy from NG Pro, Python. Um, so just going to get that started out. Um, I will discuss a little bit about like the openings you can do as a Paras against Zerg, um, as well as kind of what you need to adapt to in the PVC matchup because it is a very reactionary matchup, not only for the Zerg but for the Paras as well. So um, it's important to keep that in mind when uh, when playing the matchup. So um, what I like to do is to generally open up with a fast one gate expand type of build. Basically, just get like a pile in here on the natural at nine supply. Get the gateway around 13, gas 14, uh, make a second pile on at round 16, which is when I scout, um, and also allows me to like complete a wall off here at the natural so I can defend it. Um, and then uh, after the cybernetics core at 17 or 18, when the uh, gate is finished, I tend to go for my expansion as soon as I can, depending on how greedy or aggressive the surge is. Um, there are of course other options you can do this out from. Uh, the tree gate can work, for example, with a forge fast expand as well. In which case, you would put the nine pile in here at the natural off uh, ramp instead, and just uh, start off well enough immediately. There are pros and cons to basically all of the openings that you can do against Zerg. For example, um, gateway expand generally has a lot of aggressive options uh, against a Zerg that over drones in the early game because you get a faster warp gate tech. On the other hand, against very popular hatch first type of builds. Um, you, uh, it would be preferable to have like a forge down already because then you can simply just can rush them and it's going to be very hard for the Zerg to hold as they don't really have any links. And then of course you have outliers like Nexus first that you can do but it's a bit risky if you're not on like a big 4 player map. Uh, especially if you go very greedy and go for the gateway afterwards. Um, but that's all about like a balance of risk and reward. So I'm uh, going to be going in here scouting trying to see what he's up to. I did notice that uh, drone tried to sneak away so I'm just going to try to lay his expansion as much as possible because I'm not really too afraid of anything at this point. Like I haven't seen any links come out so I'm like okay this is going to be okay regardless. I got my gateway up. I should have uh, what I need to actually defend. So I can just delay it a little bit and then go for the scout. See what kind of gas timings he has. Um, that the spawning pool is complete so he did indeed go for a spawning pool first. Okay, the gas is coming up. Around two minutes from now on, around the five minute mark, he will probably have the speed. Uh, so I need to be careful of that so uh, that I don't get trapped out on the map and be a little bit careful about my movements in general. Um, so that's just, you know, stuff that you need to keep in mind in the early game. But he went for pool first, so I just play it safe, get the seven nice core, uh, gonna go for the expansion and get the mudship core out uh, straight afterwards. And of course, I still have this scouting probe that I can use to either have the watchtower to see when links are coming out, or I could, for example, position it here at the third to see when he is taking his third and potentially delay it, uh, depending on the timing of it. So, um, lots of early game uh, small details that um, that's very useful to keep in mind as a Paras player overall. Um, Again, Cybernetics Core just gonna start the warp gate um, as soon as you basically can afford. The faster you get it, uh, the, uh, in a better position you are to defend aggression, to do aggression, uh, and really do any kind of action at all as a Paradox because we do really rely on the warp gate tech. Uh, a couple of things, you know, he is just making them to scout. Uh, sometimes you see four links to be a little bit safer, sometimes even six links. Uh, potentially, then they want to see if they can actually do some damage, but with the Mudship Core, you're generally pretty safe. Um, and should be able to uh, at least deflect any uh, number of links below 4 so that you won't actually be able to scout at all. So, you know, once you've taken your expansion, uh, you put it down around 350, uh, you just um, keep on making your probes, of course, get the second gas on the uh, onto the main base and add on a couple of gates around the 5 minute mark so that you have those ready. Um, uh, um, so that you can take a relatively fast third, uh, which is going to be around the seven minute mark in this matchup. So it's uh, it's a very greedy build that focuses on getting a lot of economy and use that economy to overpower your opponent. Uh, what kind of follow up you do depends, of course. Like um, going to be talking about a little bit about that later, but there are multiple variations you can do and stuff. So going to go into that. 
for now though, I mean, it is a, it's a fairly standard game. There hasn't really been any kind of big moves from either player. Playing it safer, even just getting a sentry, just in case he wants to put on some aggression. I knew that he went for a relatively early speed, so I was like, okay, um, I'm not gonna risk uh, going for something very aggressive here because I can get caught out of position by, by speedlings, and that would be a pretty huge deal for me, losing my units a little bit too early. So I'm just gonna be playing it safe at this point. Uh, try to secure my third third as fast as possible and a very important element in this is to get the forge um, a little bit before you actually throw down the expansion like for example if you wanted to get the expansion around the 7 minute mark um, about like 40-50 seconds before you uh, take your expansion you want to throw down the forge because then you can get your cannons up at the um, third base as fast as possible allowing you to defend for example like heavy links in reaction to that third third so uh, that's a very key element, like if you have a very late forge, it's going to be very hard to actually defend that if it really commits to uh, to a lot of circling. Of course you have stuff like the Mothership Core, but before the expansion is actually finished, it doesn't really have a lot of DPS to deal with uh, masses of circling sorting around. And as long as you can keep on cancelling your third, he's going to be taking more of a more of a lead, because remember, this type of build uh, delays your tech greatly. Like, um, in a normal PvC, if I did something like a Stargate type of build, I would have had like a Stargate down around the 6 minutes, starting at 5 minutes or some, uh, something like that. But it's at 7 minutes and I don't really have any tech. I have gateways and I have a forge, that's all I have. So, uh, obviously, um, if I don't get an expansion to compensate for the late tech, I'm gonna be in a very rough spot. Then again, he did lay his dirt quite a bit, maybe anticipating a little bit of gateway aggression um, uh, out from my gateway expand, so that kind of works in my favor. So yeah, a few, a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds too late here, but it's not a very huge deal unless you're facing very aggressive circlings, in which case you want to get the base uh, up as fast as possible. It might seem a bit counterproductive, but uh, the faster you can get up the defenses at this base, the easier it's going to be to hold. So even if, it seem, even if it seems like it makes you vulnerable by taking it very early, it actually makes you less vulnerable because there is less of a timing window for him to abuse. Because at this point, the Zerg wants to drone as much as possible and not make Zerglings. Um, so getting it up very early is actually p potentially the safest way you can actually get up a third. So building a two pylon, and then there's like a spacer in the middle, which I'm going to be building the cannon eventually. And then you can basically place a couple of gates here to completely wall that off. And I mean especially with the sentries and the salts here, in a very safe position, uh, force fields can easily cut off any servants that come in. So I'm in a, in a relatively safe spot. Uh, and I should be able to get a cannon here at the national eventually as well with the salt blocking it to buy myself some time. Also one very nice key feature uh, when you're doing this style is that you get a lot of sentries early on because they're gas heavy, they're good for defense, and they allow you to save the minerals you need to actually get the nexus up. Um, but uh, with a lot of sentries, you also get a lot of energy for hallucinations. This allows you to scout the Zerg, um, like basically constantly by sending out hallucinations after hallucination because you have so many of them that their uh, region uh, of energy is going to be able to, to match your scouting uh, needs. So that's a pretty good advantage, especially as I was saying earlier on, this is a very scouting dependent matchup and it's all about getting the right unit composition for what the Zerg is doing. Like if you have the wrong unit composition, you're going to be in a very, very bad spot. In this game, I kind of get the right one, uh, and I'm going to show you a, uh, guys a replay later on where I just am not prepared for the tech at all, and I just horribly die. Um, just to show you how big of a difference that a tech switch can actually make. So, so just scattering around, I see it, okay, he doesn't have lair yet, so probably not going to be aggressive just left. For, like, for example, if you want to do something like a roachling push, he would still need roach speed, so he's not going to be able to do that. Uh, there's of course no Muta on the way just yet because the lair is not finished. He throws down the position a bit after my hallucination has passed, so that was pretty clever of him, but that just means that you have to keep on scouting, sending out new ones um, as much as possible, as long as you know that there isn't like a heavy aggression coming your way, because then you might want to save the energy for uh, for those precious force fields. And here we go with the wall off. Very nice cannon placement, the pylon surrounding it, there's no Artosis pylon, he can just take down and the cannon will shut off. At the same time, it's completely walled off by the nexus, the gateways and the pylons from all sides, making it pretty much impossible for Zerglings alone to actually deal with it, making sure that the Zerg has to actually commit a lot of units to try um, and get this nexus, which is uh, uh, a very risky move to do, and if you just um, keep your defenses tight, you should be in a pretty good spot. So. Uh, 
that was very nice. And I dared move out here from my lip choke because I didn't see anything uh, very aggressive coming out from the Surya. Sure, he's made some Surya's now, but it's not a huge amount of them, so they aren't really that big of a threat. Um, but yeah, the focus is on getting as much economy as possible. So just use the three bases to the full of their potential, send over probes from, from all the other bases, and try to gain an account of the lead now. Um, as I was saying, uh, there are multiple tech paths that you can go, there are multiple tech paths he can go, this time he's going for Swarm House. Uh, I'm just trying to play it safe, very standard, because I'm a little bit uncertain what he's doing, so I get both the Twilight Council so I can get Blink and potentially Storm and Feedbacks if we should go for something like Vipers. Um, I get the Robotics facility here so I can transition into Colossus eventually, Immortals if need be, and Observers to Scout as well. Um, but for example, one kind of follow-up you can do with this kind of uh, fast start is for example to just go like a pure blink sentry um, type of all-in where you add on up to 10 gates and you basically non-stop make units um, and try to hit your opponent as fast and hard as possible before any kind of hive tech can come in because blink stalkers and sentries can actually compete pretty well with roaches and hydras and links um, as long as you got decent force field and decent links as well. So that's one way to abuse this heavy economy to try and get an advantage. Um, this is not my preferred style, so I just play it more reactionary. Um, and you know, uh, eventually, like I haven't scouted it yet, which I should have because it's a little bit scary that um, Stormhouse is going to be out before I actually scout it, but um, I am sending in a hallucination here. So trying to, to figure out, okay, what are you doing? Uh, what is it that you're up to, um, and what do I need to actually defend? So I see this infestation pit, I see it researching, and I'm like, oh, you've researched something from this infestation pit. Like, sometimes you see the infestation pit simply for the hive, uh, allowing him to, to get vipers out for like a Roche Hydro composition, but if he is researching from the infestation pit, especially at this early stage, it can mean two things, but most of the time it is a swarm host. If not, if you see like a, a, a big amount of certainties, like a lot more than this, like, triple, quadruple the amount of certainties like this, and you see that they have heavy upgrades like 1-1, uh, 2-2 one, one, soon to be done or something like that, then it's probably infestors to add on so that he can eventually go into Ling, uh, Ling Ultra Infestor, uh, which is a very strong composition that you definitely need um, to to get like a double robot production to deal with, but regardless, this time it is going to be Swarm Host. Um, so I'm going to have to want to add a second robot to this, and start getting out some war prisms to harass him as much as possible um, and try to buy myself time while I go a little bit more aggressive. So I add the uh, robotics uh, bay so I can get the colossus, I add a second robo so I have the production and I start moving out because the thing about like swarm host in general is that um, they are very immobile or depends on your term of uh, your definition of very but Compared to most Zerg units, they are very um, immovable, very slow. So you can move out rather safely uh, and pressure the Zerg for him to stay, uh, forcing him to stay defensively as much as possible, allowing you uh, to buy yourself time for the unit composition you want, uh, as well as try to do a little bit of damage if he spreads himself too thin. For example, here he's already built uh, a fort base, which means that the area he needs to cover with the swarm host is starting to get rather big. Uh, but for now, I'm just moving a little bit out. I should have had an observer here. I didn't have at the time because then I can also clear a little bit of creep, which is very important in a swarm host. Because without the creep, the locust moves a lot slower, so uh, it's going to be very much harder for him to actually siege your base early on. Uh, I have to admit, this got me a little bit of guard. Um, I didn't really pay attention to how many links he actually had, but in the end, he doesn't do critical damage. The cannon defense at the third. A little bit of a recall, I uh, managed to deal with the last remaining servings that I see. Um, and at the same time, Python uh, starting to get some spine crawls because he doesn't want to get dropped by War Prism and that kind of stuff. So that's a very wise decision by him. And that's basically how the Zerg will, um, will be able to deal with your harassment in the endgame. But, I mean, regardless, he hasn't been able to really threaten me at all. He's still making a little bit of Zerglings. And the Swarm House count is okay, but it's not, like, a terrifyingly high just yet. So, um, I've succeeded in buying myself time, at least. And that's a very important thing, because um, generally, I mean, if you just had uh, attack head-on, 
against Swarm House, especially with only Gateway units, you're not gonna have a very good time. So I tried to see if I could find any kind of avenue here to do damage, but he was very well prepared for it. But we're gonna see a bit later on in this game, so I'm gonna speed it a little bit up. Um, I'm gonna be seeing uh, later on um, a, couple, uh, a couple of well uh, done harassment that actually works to a certain degree. So a little bit, needs to be careful, retreat away from the locusts. Uh, go in with the war prism here, and I'm like, oh, free fort, because I was pressuring at the front with my gateway units. So his swarm hosts are all over here, and his links just died because they tried to counterattack. Sure, he got one colossus, but he still doesn't have any really units that he can actually use, and he's 20 drones in production, so he's not going to have much to defend. So I can basically just warp in here. I get a lot of free drone kills. I could potentially have gone for the hatchery a lot earlier, but a uh, little bit of miscontrol, but regardless, I've done a pretty nifty amount of damage, I've killed a decent amount of drones, i forced him to not mine from his fort base, which he really wants to, because staying on tree base against the tree base protoss is not an optimal uh, position for Cirque to be. Um, so overall, uh, cost me some minerals, but I am so reliant on gas heavy units at this point that it doesn't really matter, I can afford sacking a lot of, of charge lots at this point. And again, I want to secure my fort. Like normally, I would wait a little bit longer than this with securing my fort. But I know he has swarm host. He's not going to be uh, very aggressive pressuring me. And as long as I can uh, keep the creep away, as long as I can pressure him to stay defensive, um, I'm in an okay spot. Like I can take that for free. There's no way for him to actually contest it. Um, he does a little bit of a nifty text switch, though. I have to say in this game, going for that spire, which I ended up not scouting. Uh, but in the end, in this game, it works out for me because I, I'm able to pressure him before he gets like a critical mass of them. But we're gonna get to that eventually. A little bit of counterattacks doing. Always, always, as also I keep on, always have a sellout on hold position in that choke. Always. Just always have it. Um, you're gonna regret not having it once the token starts coming in, so that's just something that you should always, always keep in mind. And I still have this Warpress if I feel like doing more harassment. He is starting to get a lot of defenses here though, so it's very, very hard to pressure. Also, another thing to note about um, Swarm Host is that getting Stargates is a pretty key, uh, key component because generally a follow up uh, that is very common with Swarm Host is to go into Corruptors to support them, in which case you want a Void Race. Um, so that not only can you protect your Colossus, but you can also use them to, uh, to pressure the Zerg and force him into committing to a lot of spores. Also, if he goes for a computer transition like this, um, um, having three Stargates that can pump out non-stop Phoenixes is very, very useful. Uh, unfortunately, I don't get to use them a lot this game because he goes straight for them, but it is a very key point in being able to deal with the track transitions that, that Zerg can ultimately do also. Once you get up to the fleet beacon, you can start adding on Tempest, which if he starts getting like a big spore spying crawler forest in front of his um, swarm host, you definitely need it, like you can't beat it without. So um, so that's a very key point. Now he's he's making a lot of meal list. The problem for him now is that he does not have really anything to protect his swarm host. His swarm host count is low enough that it's not like a big, like it's not very threatening to me. Um, and another problem is that he has basically zero upgrades with his mutilisk, list, which means that my heavily upgraded ground force uh, would stand a better chance of winning in a head-on fight. So I get a couple, I get a few phoenixes out, but I don't get uh, the critical mass that I want against uh, against the mutilisk here. Okay, so I see this. I start going for the counterattack. I have a couple of archons to work as an AOE as well, and. You know, he doesn't really have anything to support the Swarm House, so it's all up to the Mutalisk at this point. The problem is that he doesn't really have Ground Force to complement him too much. If he had had like a good amount of Surlings or something that would help him kill the buildings faster, then potentially he could have done that, but at this point with the Archons helping me out uh, with the extra upgrades I have, um, I'm gonna be able to finish up. But that's about it for this replay, I'm not gonna... Basically I just keep on attacking him until he dies at this point. Uh, there isn't really that much to analyze. But um, yeah, that's the, that's the first one and the basic gist of it. Gonna be uh, jumping into the next one. Let's see.
Catalina. I believe it to be this one. Also, if you guys have any questions, I will do questions um, towards the end of this session. So, um, tune in for that if you want to. And hey Boogie, thanks for coming, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this is both entertaining and educational. That will be my ultimate goal. But basically this replay shows what happens when you're not prepared for a tech switch. Like when you're not prepared at all, you just... You just die. So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here. Um, there isn't that much to see in the early game. It's basically the same type of gateway opening as I was describing earlier. Getting the first pylon at the main ramp, getting the gateway at 13, gas at 14, second pylon 16 at the natural ramp to start walling that off. Uh, go for the expansion. Um, like Cybernetic Core, and then go for the expansion, start walling off around 5 minutes get those gateways up and running. Um, I'm a probe is just chilling out a sturd so I can scout a sturd and try to delay it as much as possible. I don't delay it by a lot but you know every little victory counts so that's nice. Um, other than that I mean I go for the same three gates just trying to play that as standard as possible. Uh, my third is a little bit delayed admittedly in this game but it's not not by a huge margin fortunately so I get up my expansion he goes trying to nice it I try to get the defense up as fast as possible and it highlights a little bit the issue I was talking about in the previous replay that it might seem counterintuitive but you want to start the expansion as early as possible because if I had started this like 20 seconds earlier like a uh, 7 minute blank I would potentially had like a decent wall off here um, I could have uh, gotten a little bit more of a wall off so I could protect myself against the Sturglings and I could have a cannon on my way making it easier to defend this expansion overall. So that's very important to keep in mind that um, although it might seem a little bit weird um, that is the optimal course of action. But in the end I mean it turns out okay he doesn't commit to an extreme amount of links uh, so once I got rid of the first wave it was not a big deal one of the bigger problems I had though was that the Zerglings killed my sentries. So now I only have two sentries, which is not a lot of energy, and none of them have enough energy for hallucination. What happens when I don't have energy for hallucination? I don't scout the spire. So you could even link the, uh, the loss of this game for me uh, back to those links actually getting a couple of sentries. Like it's that simple because I have no way for like to check what he's actually doing at this point. I knew that he took a third. That's like basically what I know. Or I could infer that he did with my probe. Um, and I know that he's made a decent amount of Zerglings. That could be Muta, but it could also just be a transition into Ultra later on. Uh, I can't say for certain. There I see the Spire finally. But the problem is that there is 11 Mutalisk on the way. And they're well into production, they're almost halfway while I'm just starting my Stargate. Um, to be honest, I probably shouldn't even have gone for the Stargates at this point. I should have just cancelled the Stargates, gone straight for Blink, and done some kind of uh, massive gateway all-in like I described, but like a 10 gate, uh, 10 gate Blink all-in. That would probably be the only way I could actually defend this. Because the problem now is that he's going to be able to harass and deny my Stargates um, like before they can even start producing units. And he's going to have such an air advantage, especially even adding on Corruptors already before I have Phoenixes that it's going to be almost impossible for me to actually compete while he just kills my targets, And this is a huge problem, like I am losing way too much now. Because not only am I losing uh, economy in the form of Stargates, I'm losing production so I can't get more phoenixes, and at the same time he's completely safe and content just taking up four ways. Yes I have a pylon here, so I can kind of do a little bit of harassment, but he does have this link squad uh, that's still out on the map together with Hamidas, so it's very hard to actually do some damage to him. Um, so at this point, it basically just snowballs into me losing because there's no way for me to harass. Um, well, at the same time, he's taking out all my production. Sure, he might lose a Muta here and there, he might lose a Corruptor here and there, but it doesn't matter because his economical advantage is going to be so large at this point that I'm not going to be able to deal with it. So, unless you have the Stargates um, started when you s like at the start of the Spire, like you want the Stargates to be done around the same time as the Spire. 
Uh, if you don't, you're most likely not going to be pulled. With Blink, you can kind of buy yourself time, but uh, in this scenario, it didn't really work out because yes, I could go for the bl I did go for Blink and the Stargates at the same time, but that starved my resources, so I couldn't really make enough Stalkers to protect my Stargates. So you kind of have to choose in this scenario, and you never really want to be it, uh, be in this scenario to be honest at all. It is a very bad position to be. So it's basically just a, a game of attrition at this point, and he's gonna starve me out um, with his four base economy, with his superior tech. Even adding on more and more corruptors here, and you know, just look at that stalker number. It's, it's not, it's nothing at all. If I had instead just gone for like ten gates, blink, and just ignored Stargate, maybe I could have had like double the amount of stalkers to this, and then maybe I could have potentially pressured him quite a bit, especially if he did make those corruptors, uh, despite not seeing a Stargate. So that's basically um, the lesson to be learned in this game. So always, always, always scout. If you do not have the right army composition in time, if you do not scout what the circus is doing in time, you're gonna die a horrible death. You're gonna die a very horrible death. We can just look at supplies, it's 183 and 118. If this was like a Roach Ling game, there would, could be like a potential for a comeback with that supply, but we're talking against meatless and corruptors. Like you're not gonna win in that position at all, especially not with four bases against three, and he is fully saturated as well. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm dead. Um, now, the other thing is, okay, so what if he makes a lot of links before, like, seven minutes? Like, let's say he goes for speed, um, he goes for speed around the, um, goes for a lot of speed links around six minute mark. Um, how am I going to be able to get, like, third up? The thing is that, if he commits to a lot of circlings very early on, you don't need a third. You can just go and kill him. Like, it's a cute move to do, but it c it sets the Zerg economy too far back. And that's what I'm going to be trying to show here in this replay. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Nothing too spectacular in this opening. It's basically just same standard. Nothing too crazy going on. Okay. So spinning up a little bit. Okay, so he has a few circlings. I see him kill my probe at the third. Okay, he's probably going for a third round now. Uh, it's what I'm thinking. For some reason he doesn't do it in this game, I'm not sure what his original plan was, but he has speed, and also, if you have the potential to scout this, um, most likely the Zerg will deny it, he should deny it, but if you can scout like a very early evolution chamber, uh, there's a very big chance that he's going for like heavy speed links early on, uh, because it's a pretty common build for the Zergs to go for an early 1+, plus and speed at the same time, uh, to try and deny that turret, it's like a response to the false third builds, uh, that have been popping up lately, so uh, just keep that in mind. In the meantime, I'm just not really doing anything. I'm having the salt here, having the mudship core. I see a few circlings. I didn't really get a confirmation on it. Okay, I want to move out, and if it's a third, maybe I can force a little bit more circlings with the mudship cores here as well. So let's just go and poke and see what he does. I already got the sentry here as well. My orb kit research is on the way as well, so I should be able to defend counterattacks um, very safely. Then I see no third. This is where it gets a little bit dodgy. Uh, he already has layer on the way, which is very, very early. Um, two base layer is not really common at all. But regardless, I mean, I I see that, okay, it's two base. That's all I know, but he seems to be two base. I'm thinking maybe that he's going for something like... Uh, um, a Nidus Worm, like, two-base uh, Swarm Host or something. It's It was a very popular build in the early stages of uh, Harvest Swarm, but it's fallen out of uh, of the metagame at this point. So I, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna build a Stargate, get some Void Rays, the nice scouting for him, uh, while trying to scout myself, basically keep a little bit of map control by using a Void Ray, uh, and see what's up, because I was like, what is he actually doing at this point? But the thing was that it was basically just banking on me trying to get my third up, and before any kind of defenses was up, hit me with one plus speed links. The problem is that this guy overcommits quite a bit to it. So if we can just look at the economy, 
39, 37, okay. He's starting to get up there, but still. He's not... He doesn't really have the economy that he wants to at this point. Like, uh, if a Sir goes for a very macro-heavy focused build, like a decently faster, just drones up, now stop, at 8 minute mark, he should have um, around 60 drones. Now he is currently sitting at 34. So obviously he's very far behind in economy. That means that I don't really need to take a third. What I can do instead is to go for a very two base heavy timing. Gonna be adding more gates there eventually. And try to punish him while he's trying to drone up because if he continues making units at this drone count, he's not gonna be able to compete with my army count at all. So he needs to drone up, but while he's droning up, he's also making himself very vulnerable. Um, not to mention that because of the fast layer, he's gone for very fast tech as well, delaying his economy even more. Meaning that he doesn't really have the production he wants to at this point to um, to compete with what I'm gonna actually be able to do. So this opens up like a really good avenue for me to attack. Unfortunately, um, I did notice what he was doing a little bit late. Uh, I thought he was a little bit more ahead on the economy at first. So um, I was not really planning to do a two base all in. So my transition was a bit slow. But even if it's slow, you're gonna be seeing that he doesn't really have much to compete at all. And if I hit even faster, then obviously he's going to have a very hard time um, uh, being able to deal with this. So I'm like, okay, well, I I got the Stargate. Um, I guess I just go for like Void Ray Sala all in. If he makes Roaches, I will just kill the Roaches with the Void Rays. If he goes links, then my Salas with 1+, plus will be able to two-shot them unless he's gone for armor upgrades. But he's been focusing on weapon upgrades all game. So I should probably be able to two-shot the Zerglings. Uh, that's basically the logic behind this and also he did take this third base all the way out there It's very hard for for Queens to get over here um, It's very hard to reinforce in general So overall I felt like okay, he's probably not gonna have that much ant here I guess he's gonna be making quite a bit of spores, but uh, That's gonna be committing a lot to static defense that doesn't necessarily do too much Especially if I find a position where they are not uh, really able to do too much damage so um that kind of worked in my favor as well. So we're seeing him start produce units now, but his unit count is at four higher sixteen against eight salas, two voiders, and eight sentries. So I have a lot of force fields as well, and time warps with mothership core two. In fact, because I haven't had to use any kind of abilities with it at all. So I have a lot of stuff that can can work in my uh, favor when taking the engagement here. And as I was talking about, my transition was slow. I I should probably have hit like a minute ago. And at that point, like, what would he have? Like, even at this point, his economy isn't that bad. He's overdrawn maybe a little bit, but he's still only at 58 drones. So if I hit, like, a minute before, he would have basically zero. Of course, he could probably play better as well. Uh, obviously, neither of us are, like, uh, top ground master Korean level. So we could do both do better, but it's just to illustrate how vulnerable the Surge is at this timing. So, gonna fast forward a little bit. Go for the engagement. Take the watchtower. I see some Zerglings, I haven't seen the Hydras, but I'm like, well, he must have something more than the Zerglings at this point. So I see the Hydras, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna force field, uh, force field as much as possible, delay them from engaging in the fight, so when the Hydras actually engage, I have killed all the meat shield. The Queen is about to die, the Zerglings are nothing more, and now there is only four Hydras just sitting out here, and they have no protection, no support, no nothing. And they're on a time warp, so I can easily force fill them because they're slow to retreat. Allowing myself to connect very easily. Not to mention that, as I was talking about, because queens have a very hard time getting from the natural out to this third because of the distance, well, there's no creep, so the hydras are going to be slower too. So they can't really kite the salts at all. So, you know, keep in mind where the creep is is a very important thing when taking a good fight. Like, if the Zerg takes a fight off creep, you're going to have a massive advantage. That counts for basically every matchup as well, like, for Terran especially, if the Zerg takes a, a fight off creep, you basically won the game most likely, unless he's way ahead and just can sack units. So yeah, that's the, that's the gist of it. If he goes for too many Zerglings early on, if he hinders his economy too much, uh, there's not gonna be an issue, you can basically just um, punish him with a 2 base build, it's really that simple. 
just try to keep in mind what he can do. Like, why did he delay that third? Why did he delay second? Was it only for the circling? So does he have like some tech behind? What kind of follow up, uh, up is it, and uh, that kind of stuff? So um, yeah, that's basically it about the tree gate. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I am up for for answering those. Would be cool. Uh, if not, I guess I could show like one replay how to hold like very early speedlings, like um, 14, 14 or something similar. I do have a replay of, of something of that kind as well. Also the notes should be up for you guys on the screen now, so if you want to take notes then please do. So I guess in the meantime, just going to be putting on this one. It's basically a replay how to hold um, very early speedlings. So yeah, just opening standard. Nothing too special. A bit of an extractor trick. So we can see the service at 14 supply, 15 supply. Ah uh, shit, that was the wrong replay. My bad guys, that was the proxy hatch one. Uh, that's a bit more of a special case. What's an overgrowth map though? Let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. My bad. But yeah, proxy hatcheries are pretty exciting to play as against as well. And you can get some pretty funky games, but the general rule is to go for a very fast robo and get them more loud. Um, to, to deal with spine crawlers because that's what they most likely will do with the proxy archery. So uh, so keep that in mind. You can like try to go for a star gate, but that's generally not a very solid solution because they will generally get a queen and a spore or two uh, as well early on. So they will most likely be able to shut it down, and then you don't really have any power units to, to deal with it. What happens if it goes Mass Lynx and Catalina and you can't take it the third that is near your main? Uh, it depends on how early he goes for the Mass Lynx. If he goes for the Mass Lynx early on, as uh, in the Overgrowth map, like at 6 minutes, I just do 2 base uh, timing and kill him. If he goes for a little bit later, around like, um, let's say around 7 mark, um, I should be able to defend if I get my defenses up in time and if I defend correctly. If I should fail to do that and he's able to deny my third, you're gonna have a pretty hard time recovering. Um, you can try to go up like four gates and then add a tech building as fast as possible so your tech is not too delayed. Uh, and then try to go for the third later on, but to be honest, I think you might just be forced into some kind of two base all in. But it's very hard, it's it's very uh, game dependent how that goes. So here we can see, uh, 14 gas, 14 pool. It's gonna go for uh, for very early speedlings. And that's important when you scout your opponent. Um, I see that there is no natural, okay. He could go for like pool first, in which case it would be thrown down around now. But I see this very early gas like gas and pool before hash. That is a very dubious sign. Like, pool into hatch and then a gas is pretty common. Both gas and pool before um, an actual expansion. That is pretty dubious. Also, if you click on the gas, you can see how much it's harvested. Okay, so it's harvested 60 gas because it's um, 24, uh, 240, which is 60, or 2500 minus 60. Um, so he's been mining for it for quite a while. 
you don't do that normally so, so I know at this point that okay this guy is probably gonna go for some kind of speedling thing I should play very defensively because regardless if he attacks or not he's gonna be delaying his natural expansion regardless um, so I, I can afford taking a later expansion as well there's no need for me to be very aggressive I can even see here okay there's no base at over three minutes this guy is not playing a standard game by any means so I just delay him as much as possible and yeah he throws down an expansion but with such a late expansion there's just no way he's gonna be sitting idle especially with that early gas so at this point uh, with a gateway expanse if you have a forge I would say this is not a big problem you should have your forge done, your cannon should already be in the way. You just add a gateway, add a pylon, and then you add a second pylon to completely wall off. And you basically won the game there. Or you basically held and you're very far ahead. So uh, with the forge, as long as you get the cannon up in er uh, early and as long as you get the uh, the wall off complete before they suddenly hit you, uh, you shouldn't have issue. It's a little bit more tricky uh, with a gateway expand. But I want to get the expansion, again, this seems counterintuitive, but I want to get the expansion up as fast as possible so that I can get the Photon Overturn as fast as possible. Because that is a very great defensive tool against larger amount of links. So uh, I'm going to try to do that, but just as a security measure, I have one slot standing in the choke um, up to my main base, which means that if he just tries to run past my, this initial slot and try to do some damage into the main, uh, I will be able to block him so that he can actually... Um, just go for that and actually has to try and fight here at the natural and you know the time a few circlings take down an entire nexus is enough time potentially for the mothership core to clean up the circlings because remember this is like a one base thing he doesn't even have his natural done yet so there's a limited amount of circlings he can have at this point he's not going to be able to have like 40 circlings now and just kill your natural expansion and of course Trying to, to get a wall off, trying to get a forge for a cannon as well, trying to be as safe as possible. And he was quite late. He should have hit before this, to be honest. He should have gotten in here. But he doesn't, so I get some extra time to to do a lot of damage. He kills the gateway though. And he's going for my sellout, but yeah, he killed my sellout. But now he has only these links. He doesn't have a lot of links at all. So uh, I'm gonna have an easier time defending, especially with the Mudship Core. He doesn't have enough links to snipe my Nexus. And if that Nexus gets complete, I have a Fort Nova Charge. <coughs> Excuse me a little bit. <coughs> so, it's gonna be very hard for him to deny my natural. And the thing is, as long as my natural is alive, I don't really care if I lose a lot of buildings here. You just look at the drone count against probe count. 21 probes against 15 drones. Like, I'm, I'm way ahead in economy. Sure, he has his natural, but he's still making links. And I'm gonna have my natural soon too, so I'm in a in, I'm in a pretty good spot, especially since I already have my cybernetic core warp gate is on the way, my tech isn't really delayed as well, so I'm pretty much in a in a very good spot. So just to buy time for photon overcharge, I tried to keep on chrono boosting out units as fast as possible. Yeah, he gets a sentry. That's bad, but my cell still stands strong. And boom, there we have photon overcharge. The thing is, now he can't engage at all for the next 60 seconds. Like, he, he's not going to be able to do anything. He's just... He just has to retreat. Like, a Zergling will get two shot by the photon charge and he shoots rather fast. So unless he has an insane amount of Zerglings, he's not going to be able to do anything. And the thing is, he can't run past it because I have a sellout. I even have a second one now that I can use to add extra DPS on the National. So this buys me enough time to get a cannon up to get a gateway up and to get a complete wall off and once I have a complete wall off with extra cannon for DPS suddenly I've held it he's in, he's in a very bad spot so that's about it at this point I just keep on making gateway units I just keep on making units, making units, making units making sure that he can't really engage at all and just for security measures I add a second uh, cannon here if he had stopped making links after a while, I would not have done this because I want to focus on economy again so he doesn't catch up. But he has committed so much to links and we can see now 16 against 27. That's just a huge lead. That's like game ending. So I'm just going to add a second cannon because you know you never know. Maybe he has some sick bane link bust or something in the plant. So I'm going to add a, uh, a little bit of an extra defense. Kind of want to add a second pylon here as well. So even if these um, falls out, it will not be under, uh, uh, unpowered. So. 
Just just trying to be very safe at this point so I do not lose the game. And at this point, I mean, there's no point in watching the rest. I've won the game now. Um, I really shouldn't have lost it 15 minutes, but I basically won the game at this point. He's so far he's so far behind in the economy. If I just go for like a two two base uh, attack, he dies. If I go for a fast third, I guess he can try and deny that, but. Once I get the few warpings going on, I should be able to get it early enough that I will have an economic lead regardless. So I'm in a I'm in a very good spot um, by by all standards. So that's how you defend that kind of early circlings. Um There are earlier timings like a temple and stuff, but they generally come without gas. In which case, you won't be able to follow up with speedlings. So as long as you can um, can get up your um, your defense is in the natural basically just just make sure that he you have the wall off on the ramp to block the circlings and if it's even earlier so you don't have a submarine score yet or something just add a submarine score ASAP get like as many cells as possible <coughs> uh, while trying to block any kind of additional reinforcement using a cell at in the choke eventually using a pylon block or whatever and once you have the mudship core out you basically win the game Slowlings can't compete against a mothership core at all, so that's that's basically it. So again, uh, if anyone has any questions, I will give you guys a minute uh, or two for that. Other than that, I am gonna be uh, be turning this off eventually. Yeah, and getting your third as fast as possible is, is a very good thing to respawn. Um, it's just that sometimes you need to adapt and just capitalize on the disadvantage your opponent has. Like if he doesn't have a good drone count, so he has to drone, so he doesn't have units, then doing a heavy aggression type of uh, build would, uh, would be very good. But I mean... It's not like it's bad to take a fast third if you can take it. Like not capitalizing on it early is okay as well. It's just that um, it's not always optimal. But as long as you're very good in a standard game, um, you can basically win any matchup by just being very standard, taking a fast third, being very economical, having good macro, and knowing what to do with that macro is the key to get to masters, basically. Um, but yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, I hope it was informative for you guys. And uh, see you around.